Hi, I'm Lauren from LSP Actions and over the next few minutes I'm going to give you an overview of how to get started with the Light Chronicles Photoshop Action Set, which is part of the Sentimental Storyteller Bundle. This action set is suited for Photoshop Creative Cloud only. It contains 95 actions in easy to click workflow order. Photoshop actions are pre-recorded steps that you can play out over your image to create this warm, whimsical, sentimental style. These actions are really versatile and they adapt to work beautifully over your image. Everything you could think of is here, ready to click and use. All of the editing steps are non-destructive, meaning that they won't affect your original background image. And all layers are open, meaning you can um, simply click them, open up to edit further. But only if you want to. You will find that they work perfectly just as they are. You can use this set as a um, start to finish uh, standalone edit or you can mix it freely with your own hand editing style. The choice is completely yours. So let's get started. First of all, you're going to need Creative Cloud, uh, Photoshop Creative Cloud open like this. Let me just get rid of these actions for now so I can show you what to do if you can't see them. After installing, the actions will show in your Photoshop action palette. If you can't see your action palette, come up here to Window and click Actions and the action palette will appear. I like to grab the action folder if it appears at the bottom, for example down here. You can grab the folder and drag it all the way to the top of the palette so it's easy to access. You can um, click this little drop down here next to the folder to see what's inside. These are your actions. This view is currently in grey editing mode where you can click on an action, for example like this, hit play and the action will play out but you might prefer to use button mode. Button mode is up here, you'll see these little lines at the top of your action palette. Click here and select button mode and you will see I have colour coordinated and organised the action palette for you so it's even easier to use. In button mode you can simply click um, and it will play out, you don't have to play the um, press the play button. If your actions look all messy and uncoordinated like this in button mode Simply grab the left hand side until the arrow changes and drag it in until the actions stack into a nice neat column. Similarly, if they are um, up here above your layers panel, they can look a little bit messy like this and be a little bit hard to use I find. So grab the tab where it says actions and pull them out. You can have them free floating like this, you can move it anywhere on your window, but I like to drag it in just here next to my layers, you'll see a blue line appears, this means you can anchor it down and it will appear here, meaning it also um, doesn't overlay onto your image. So let's take a look at what's included in the Light Chronicles Photoshop Action Set. So here you have 95 individual powerful Photoshop actions that do different things to your image. You will notice they're arranged into sections or chapters <laughs> designed in workflow order. So I recommend you visit each chapter um, in order as you progress through your edit, starting here with chapter one, set the scene. Chapter two is sculpt the light brushes. Chapter three is adding the divine blur. Chapter four is editing the dreamy skin and um, bringing out those details. Chapter 5 is the whimsical washes. You can play these overlays to create that dreamy, warm, um, dynamic feel to your image. Chapter 6 you have enhancements such as the background painter, adding a lens flare, adding the sunbeams coming through the window, all of those really artistic enhancements that you can add in. Chapter 7 is your final art layers. You may be finished and you think, oh, one little tweak, so you can add a soft sharpen, neutralise those tones if they're a little bit neon, you can add some painterly contrast. You can create matte, you can warm it up and cool it down. Um, and then you have some extra paints here. Paints you paint on, I will go through that in just a minute with you. And then you have chapter 8, which is a social resize. You can socially um, resize your image for Facebook, Instagram, website, etc. without resizing the original. So let's go back up to the top and have a look. So each chapter is designed for you to be able to create the specific end result. For example, here, set the scene. This allows you to tweak and balance your image as a kind of uh, soft proof or pre-edit. You can simply play it and see the subtle effect instantly, uh, which will affect your whole image. 
Let me show you here, I'll open up the original of this image. So for example, if I wanted to play Shadow Rescue, you will notice this brings up the shadows of the whole image. The effect is very subtle. So what you need to do is come up here to Opacity and you can slide this up to see um, to strengthen the effect of, say, Shadow Rescue. Down means it's invisible, zero, coming up, coming up, until you're happy. Adding a contrast hit over the image. You can bring the exposure down. And if you don't like the effect, you can simply drag it down to the trash can or right click delete. Or you can turn it off using this little eye here. Add a warm filter over. And you can turn these layers on or off. You'll see they haven't affected your original background and they are non-destructive. So you can simply turn them on, tweak and slide the opacity until you're happy. Before the chapters, you will notice you have a toolkit section up here. These are simple one-click um, actions you may wish to take um, whilst you're editing your image, such as taking a snapshot in the history, flattening it down, which means compressing all of these into one layer, if you're happy, making a duplicate of your whole image um, so you don't save over the original, saving a copy, cleaning up any unused layers, you have Select and Fix Bonus, I'll show you how to use that in just a second, and you can create a new merge layer to clone, fill, um, heal and fix and things like that. So for example, I want to remove James's head up here. I'm going to create a new merge layer first, so I don't do anything onto my background layer. So you'll see the new merge layer is here. I'm going to come over here to the Spot Healing Brush tool, um, click my mouse over it and select Patch Tool. I'm going to draw generously around James's head here. And I'm going to use the Select and Fix um, action now. Now I've made a selection, I'm going to use this action and it will remove James's head. It's not a great substitute, it uses Photoshop's Content Aware technology, but it has made a good effort. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab the clone stamp, 100% opacity, a low flow, and I'm just going to clone this area up. Now I'm going to be um, blurring this background, I've already decided on that, so I'm not too fussed about getting it perfect, but I just need to clean that up a little bit. You can also use this layer for cleaning up any other distractions in your image, liquefying, um, extending the background, anything like that that you need to do. So just turn that on and off there. So we've played some of these set the scene base layer um, image adjustments here. So now I'm going to come down here to chapter 2 which is Sculpt the Light Brushes. Sculpt the Light, light Brushes uh, will work differently to this previous section. These white boxes here are layer masks. When the layer mask is white, it means the whole effect shows. When the layer mask is black, for example, I'm going to turn this one black now, the whole effect is hidden. So this fixed layer here, where we just removed James's head, white shows it, black hides it. The Sculpt the Light brushes will all be played with a black layer mask, meaning they're hidden. It's a bit like a Lotto scratch card. So what you'll need to do is grab your brush tool, Make sure you are on just normal brush tool, on white. Your settings need to be normal, 100% opacity, 25% flow, and nice and soft. So what you can do now is you can choose one of these um, Sculpt the Light brushes to play out and then paint onto your image to really start getting into that personalised edit. So I'm going to start here with the Draw the Attention Extra brush. This one is really cool, it will darken your whole image down and it will give you a layer that you can paint on to draw attention to certain areas. So I'm going to draw the attention in, I'm just going to make my brush bigger, maybe not quite that big. By drawing the attention into this area here and also coming in a little bit more over the face of my subjects. So let's turn that off and on. So you can see we're really starting to hone the light now. Now I'm going to play Softly Darken Brush. You'll notice it has this black layer mask here. Make sure you are on the layer mask. The actions will automatically select this for you, so you don't need to worry. But if you have clicked off for some reason, make sure you're on it. And I'm just going to softly darken the area here. Highlights down. I'm going to use this brush. I'm just shrinking my brush down just to take those highlights off her head a touch here. See what, that's where the light is coming in and hitting. 
contrast brush. I'm using the bracket keys on my keyboard to change my brush size. Now if you find the effect is too much, I find that is a little bit too much, I'm going to come up here and turn the opacity down just as we did with the, the um, set the scene layers until I'm happy with that one. I'm going to play a soft brush. I'm just going to run this over those curtains, but I'm also planning on blurring the background as well, so I don't need to worry too much. So I'm just softening down. You can use this on the skin or any other areas you want to start diminishing the attention to. The whole point of an edit like this is bringing the attention and the focus into the connection between your subjects and darkening or softening everything else. So let's see before, using the Sculpt the Light brushes and after. I can simply turn them on or off by clicking here. Now I'm going to come, um, I'm going to miss Divine Blur just for a second because that's quite a big one and I'm going to show you that separately in its own separate video. The Dreamy Skin and Detail brushes are the same as the Sculpt the Light brushes as in you play them out and you will get a black layer mask appearing ready for you to paint on. Keep your brush settings the same, 100% opacity, 25% flow, nice and soft. So let's play this painterly silk skin brush. I'm going to use my magnifying glass to zoom in now to our subject. Back on the brush, let's make it nice and small. And I'm going to use this to paint over the skin and give it this beautiful painterly fill. Super soft and glowing. I'm going to play a sharp details brush. You can see I'm just playing them out by clicking on them and then coming up here and clicking on the areas I want them to show. 3D contrast, let's play a little bit of this. Lift the shadows. I'm just going to play this a touch around her face. Bright eyes. I'd recommend using this one just for the iris, not the whole eye. You don't kind of want glowing white eyes, so paint that on there. Let's turn these off, the painterly skin, so these orange layers here. And on again. Now the whimsical wash section, you can use this. This is where it really starts coming together. You can play a wash over your image and it will create that beautiful warm toning. You can choose to play them all, or you can choose a few individually and see what they look like. I would recommend uh, flattening or taking a snapshot and saving um, your image regularly throughout. If you're worried about saving over the original, you can always save as a copy. So you can hit save as and give it a different file name, add a number one to the end, edit as edit or something like that. I definitely recommend doing that as you go because before you know it, you're going to have a lot of layers built up here and that of course increases the size of the file. So let's play, for example, Extra Warm Evening. You simply click on that, you can turn it on or off, and just like the other layers with a white mask, you can change the opacity up or down, depending on what you want to do. You can use a black brush to paint onto the layer mask if you want to. For example here, I would like to take this effect off the centre of this image. And so on and so forth. Now down to the enhancements. If you want to watch the uh, the full edit of this image, by the way, you need to watch the Pickles and the Pup video tutorial where I really go into every every step you need to take to edit an image like this. Right now, um, I'm just giving you an overview of how the actions work. This is not the final edit of this image. So you can click on any of the enhancements to add them in. For example, darken the edges. We'll do exactly as it says, it will darken the edges of your image down. Sunbeams will add real sunbeams into your image that you can move around um, to direct the light. So for example, you can come up here, edit, after um, playing the sunbeams, free transform, and you will see the sunbeams here. You can change the direction of these beams. 
move them in or out. You can click on the layer mask and using a black brush you can paint them off. But you can see a more detailed um, way of using these when I show you the proper edit in the Pickles and the Pup editing video tutorial. And then down here on the final art layers you have um, one last click. These are blue layers again. These will give you a white layer mask that you can slide the opacity. You don't need to paint unless you want to paint it off. So for example we could have one last warm and you can slide the opacity to change the warmth of your image. You have a few paints here. For example Rescue Darks brush. These are just some last little paints you can use just to finalise how your image looks and feels, just to give it that one last final art boost. I'm going to play Tone the Reds, and let's just shrink this brush down, I'm just going to tone these reds on the skin here just a little bit. And then you have your social resize. All you need to do is click these, for example Facebook landscape, and you will notice up the top here it's created a brand new image which it has sharpened, shrunk and changed ready for you to save to Facebook. This has not affected your original image here. This is a brand new one. So you can add your logo or your watermark in. I have mine saved as a brush so um, I'm just going to change this to white. And then you can save this by going file, save as or export save for web, whichever one you find easiest and save this as your Facebook version. So that's a very quick overview of how to use the um, LSP Light Chronicles Photoshop Action Suite. You can catch the proper edit of this image as well as um, a load of other editing videos over on the LSP website under support video tutorials. You will also have the link in your download um, and you can watch these on YouTube as well. So thank you for purchasing the LSP Sentimental Storyteller Collection. I hope you found this video helpful. Please do come and post in my LSP Facebook group if you have any questions at all. Thanks for watching. I'm Lauren. Bye.